Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the second half of the Eocene, the caniform carnivorans began their first initial wave of diversification. As we have seen in previous videos, the most basal of these were the amphicyonids, also known as the bear dogs, being among the first carnivorans to reach large sizes. Following on from these in the slightly more derived position are the true dogs of the family Canidae, which need no introduction. However, the most derived clade of caniforms are the Arctoids, which include modern bears, pinnipeds, and mustaloids. All three of these lineages began to diverge from each other during the late Eocene, approximately 38 million years ago, with the earliest forms being small generalised animals, similar to modern raccoons and civets. Indeed, this similarity, when combined with the incomplete nature of the fossil record, has led to confusion as to how best to clarify these lineages. For example, older studies tended to place bears and pinnipeds as sister lineages, with the mustaloids being more basal. This was not helped by the lack of basal pinniped relatives known from the fossil record, with seals, sea lions and walruses thought to have evolved from a more terrestrial bear-like ancestor. However, recent studies have classified pinnipeds and mustaloids as sister groups instead, with the bears being more basal. It also turns out that the amphicynodontids, once thought to be the most primitive bears, are better placed as stem pinnipeds. These animals first appear in the fossil record during the late Eocene, and probably originated in North America. Amphicynodontids, not to be confused with the similarly named amphicyonid bear dogs, were generally small and omnivorous raccoon-like creatures, with adaptations to arboreal lifestyles. The oldest of these was the genus Parictis, long considered to be the most basal known bear. This is not surprising given the close relationship between ursids and pinnipeds. A highly successful animal native to North America and Eurasia from the late Eocene to the Miocene, Parictis was tiny with a skull just 7 centimetres or 2.7 inches long, about the size of a marten and probably resembling one in life. This little generalist is now considered to be the earliest known member of the newly erected clade Pan Pinnipedia, and was therefore probably very similar to the common ancestor of bears and mustaloids as well. Most later amphicynodontids were generally similar in form, with the Oligocene genus Amphicynodon being a superficially raccoon-like animal native to Eurasia. About the size of a small dog, this long-tailed arboreal omnivore possessed a huge range extending from France to Mongolia and may have been represented by up to 10 species. A far stranger and more specialised Amphicynodontid was native to the western coasts of North America during the early Miocene. Named Colponymus, this genus was a semi-aquatic marine mammal that is known from relatively scrappy remains that include nearly complete skulls and a smattering of postcranial material. Due to this, Colponymus was often considered to be a basal bear that had adapted to a semi-aquatic niche, although this is now not thought to be the case. The skull was proportionally large and was held up by strong neck muscles, while the snout was slightly downturned. This, when combined with broad heavy molars, forward-facing eyes and a powerful bite, suggests a diet composed of hard-shelled mollusks, similar to modern sea otters. Given its placement in Amphicynodontidae, Colponymus would have probably resembled a modern otter, being less bear-like than is often assumed. It was also the largest member of the family, being about the same size as the modern giant otter of South America. Although a semi-aquatic marine mammal that hunted for food along the coast, Colponymus was not a direct ancestor of later pinnipeds, being an early side branch that adapted to an aquatic niche independently. Another family of stem pinnipeds were entirely semi-aquatic, with these being the slightly more derived semantorids. Once considered to be mustaloids, recent studies have placed the group as basal pinniped relatives instead. These animals were present across Eurasia and North America, and were freshwater-dwelling piscivores that inhabited rivers, lakes, and marshland. One of the oldest known semantorids was the genus Potamotherium, which was native to France and Germany, appearing around the time of the Oligocene-Miocene boundary circa 23 million years ago, and persisting until the late Miocene. 
A superficially otter-like animal with a streamlined body, short legs and a flexible spine, Botamotherium measured about 1.5 meters or 5 feet long. A good swimmer, it dwelt in the rivers and lakes of subtropical Miocene Europe, feeding on fish and possibly freshwater mollusks. Meanwhile, a more famous close relative, Puigelia, was endemic to what is now Canada at about the same time, between 24 to 21 million years ago. Often hailed as a missing link in pinniped evolution, Puigelia was not the direct ancestor of seals, sea lions and walruses, but does give us a good idea of what this ancestor would have looked like. Measuring about 1 meter or 3 feet 3 inches long, the genus is known from a single well-preserved skeleton found on Devon Island in Nanavut, northern Canada. Today, this region consists of bleak arctic tundra, but at the time of the Oligocene-Miocene boundary possessed a cool, temperate climate and forests of conifers and hardwood trees, comparable to modern Vancouver Island. Puigelia inhabited the lakes present here, diving beneath the water to catch fish. Its forelegs were short but strong and would have been attached to its trunk by powerful muscles. The bones of its toes were somewhat flattened, which strongly suggests that they were webbed. In many ways, its skeleton was very similar to an otter's, but the shape of its skull and teeth mark it out as a relative of pinnipeds. As examples, its bottom jaw had four incisors rather than the standard six of other carnivorans, and it had a large infratorbital foramen, a hole beneath each eye through which whisker nerves would have passed. The wide hole suggests that, like modern seals, this animal had sensitive whiskers. Cementorids persisted until the late Miocene, when it is possible that they were outcompeted by relatives of modern otters, which were specialised for more effective swimming. The oldest known member of the more derived clade Pinnipedimorpha, and the first to resemble seals in appearance, was the genus Enalearctos, native to what is now California and Oregon during the late Oligocene and early Miocene. This animal possessed a short tail and webbed, flipper-like feet that retained claws. Significantly better adapted for swimming than the Cementorids, an Aliarctos still represents something of a transitional form between ancestral otter-like animals and modern seals, sea lions and walruses. Unlike most modern pinnipeds, it probably used both its front and hind flippers for propulsion. Its teeth also still resembled those of terrestrial carnivorans, with slicing carnassials at the back of its jaws. This suggests that it had to drag larger prey items back to shore in order to tear them apart and eat them. Interestingly, one species, Analearctos m. longi, exhibited notable sexual dimorphism, suggesting that this physical characteristic may have been an important driver of seal evolution. Members of crown group Pinnipedia, which contains modern seals, sea lions and walruses, first emerged at the Oligocene-Miocene boundary. As these groups were and remain fairly diverse, I will leave them for a future video. However, I can cover the extinct Desmatophocids, a family of uncertain placement that may be related to sea lions and walruses. They were found across the northern Pacific, from the west coast of North America to Japan, and were the first pinnipeds to develop truly large sizes with some species being comparable to modern elephant seals in mass. One genus, Desmatophoca, is known from quite fragmentary material, but possessed more powerful jaws than modern pinnipeds. The eyes were large, suggesting an animal that actively hunted by sight, possibly in low light conditions. A far better known form was Allodesmus, which was native to California and Japan during the mid to late Miocene. A superficially sea lion-like animal, it was able to walk on all fours when hauled out on land, and showed distinct sexual dimorphism, with males growing to sides of around 4 metres long or 13 feet, and females being noticeably smaller. It powered its swimming using its front flippers, and may have mostly foraged in deep water, using both keen vision and sensitive whiskers to locate prey. The nasal region of its skull also shows some similarities to modern elephant seals, and some reconstructions depict males with the same sort of large proboscis. The males also possess large and strong canines, which, when coupled with the sexual dimorphism present in the genus, suggests that adult males fought over access to harems of females. Desmatophocids died out at the end of the Miocene circa 9 million years ago, 
probably being outcompeted by modern pinniped families, which had experienced a burst of evolutionary diversity at this time. This left the seals, sea lions, and walruses to swim on into the Pliocene. But that is a story best left for another time. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be focused on the bizarre gorilla sloth horses, better known as calicathirs. See you again soon. Cheerio.